pollution increases as the distance of the planet increases from the sun besides revolving around the sun a planet also rotates on its own axis like a top the time taken by a planet to complete one rotation is called its period of rotation some planets are known to have moons satellite that is satellites revolving around them beginning with the first planet and that is mercury the planet mercury is the nearest to the sun it is the smallest planet of our solar system its orbit around the sun takes only 87.97 days the shortest of all the planets in the solar system because mercury is very close to the sun it is very difficult to observe it as most of the time it is hidden in the glare of the sun however it can be observed just before sunrise or just after sunset near the horizon so it is visible only at places where trees or buildings do not obstruct the view of the horizon mercury has no satellite of its own next comes the venus venus is earth's nearest planetary neighbor venus is the second planet from the sun and the third brightest object in the earth's sky after the sun and the moon venus orbits the sun every 224.7 earth days sometimes venus appears in the eastern sky before sunrise sometimes it appears in the western sky just after sunset therefore it is often called a morning or an evening star although it is not a star venus has no moon or satellite of its own rotation of venus on its axis is somewhat unusual it rotates from east to west while the earth rotates from west to east venus isn't the closest planet to the sun it is still the hottest the reason behind that is it has a thick atmosphere full of the greenhouse gas that is carbon dioxide and clouds then comes our mother planet that is earth it is the only planet in the solar system on which life is known to exist some special environmental conditions are responsible for the existence and continuation of life on the earth these include the right distance from the sun so that it has the right temperature range the presence of water and suitable atmosphere and a blanket of ozone from space the earth appears blue green due to the reflection of light from water and land masses on its surface the axis of rotation of the earth is not perpendicular to the plane of its orbit the tilt is responsible for the change of seasons on the earth the earth has only one moon then comes the mars so this is the next planet the first one actually outside the orbit of the earth mars is a cold desert world it is half the size of earth mars is sometimes called the red planet it's red because of rusty iron in the ground Mars has two small natural satellites that is Phobos and Deimos its orbital period is 687 days that is to complete one revolution it takes 687 days Indian Space Research Organization launched India's first Mars orbiter mission that is Mangalyaan on November 5 2013 It was successfully placed into an orbit of Mars on September 24, 2014. With this, India became the first country in the world to do so in its first attempt. Then comes the Jupiter. It is the fifth planet from the sun and the largest in the solar system. It is so large that about 1300 Earths can be placed inside this giant planet. However the mass of Jupiter is about 318 times that of our earth it rotates very rapidly on its axis Jupiter has a large number of satellites it also has 
faint rings around it. You can easily recognize Jupiter as it appears quite bright in the sky. If you observe it with the help of a telescope, you can also see four of its large moons. At present, it has 79 confirmed moons. Then comes Saturn. Saturn is the sixth planet from the Sun and the second largest in the solar system after Jupiter. It appears yellowish in color. What makes it unique in the solar system is its beautiful rings. These rings are not visible with the naked eye. You can observe them with a small telescope. Saturn also has a large number of satellites, that is 62 satellites. One interesting thing about Saturn is that it is the least dense among all the planets. Its density is less than that of water. Then it is Uranus and Neptune. These are the outermost planets of the solar system and they can be seen only with the help of large telescopes. Uranus is the seventh planet from the sun. Like Venus, Uranus also rotates from east to west. The most remarkable feature of Uranus is that it has highly tilted rotational axis. As a result, its orbital motion appears to roll on its side. Then it is Neptune. Neptune is the eighth and the farthest known planet from the sun in the solar system. It is the fourth largest planet by diameter the third most massive planet and the densest giant planet. The first four planets that is Mercury, Venus, Earth and Mars are much nearer to the Sun than the other four planets. They are called the inner planets. The inner planets have very few moons. The planets outside the orbit of Mars that is Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune are much further off than the inner planets. They are called the outer planets and they have a ring system around them. The outer planets have large number of moons. Now let us learn about some other members of the solar system. The first one is asteroids. Now there is a large gap in between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter. This gap is occupied by a large number of small objects that revolve around the sun and these are called asteroids. Asteroids can only be seen through large telescopes. Then it is comets. Comets are also members of our solar system. They revolve around the sun in highly elliptical orbits. However, their period of revolution around the sun is usually very long. A comet appears generally as bright head with a long tail. The length of the tail grows in size as it approaches the sun. The tail of a comet is always directed away from the sun. Many comets are known to appear periodically. One such comet is Halley's Comet which appears after nearly every 76 years. It was last seen in 1986. Then it is meteors and meteorites. Now at night when the sky is clear and the moon is not there, you may sometimes see bright streaks of light in the sky. These are commonly known as shooting stars, although they are not stars. They are called meteors. A meteor is usually a small object that occasionally enters the Earth's atmosphere. At that time, it has a very high speed. The friction due to the atmosphere heats it up. It glows and evaporates quickly. That is why the bright streaks lasts for a Earth is called some meteors are large and so they can reach the earth. They can actually strike the surface of the earth before they evaporate completely. The body that reaches the earth is called a meteorite. Meteorites help scientists in investigating the nature of the material from which the solar system was 